daughter house as also the presence of the tanneries and tangra which kept the upper class families away. This area back then was mostly inhabited by lower caste Hindus, Muslims, Christians and Chinese settlers. Mother Teresa lived and worked from here, setting up the missionaries of charity and building the mother house in the Enteri region. Enteri as a region therefore continues to be an intersection of various communities of people coming together from different religious faiths, cultures and eating habits. Behind me, you see the Enterly Market. You try and take a closer look at it. She was born to an upper caste Hindu parents and she studied in a Christian Methodist school. She taught me how to buy the best pork sausages from Enterly Market that we just saw snapshots of. And today she will be cooking for us the Moglai delicacy to which Calcutta added its own touch, the Kolkata Biryani. The Kolkata Biryani itself stands for intersection. It brings together people from different class, caste, politics and religious backgrounds. We're standing outside Ms. Manjari Chaudhary's house. Let's go in and see what she has on offer for us. Uh, Ms. Manjari Chaudhary will be cooking the Kolkata biryani from her kitchen today. Uh, let's take a look at her kitchen. And she's going to be showing us how you too can prepare this royal dish in your personal home space. Hi there. Over to you, Manjari. How have you been? How have you been? <laughs> I've been doing great. Right, right. So Manjari, you're going to be cooking the Kolkata biryani for us today. That's right. Have you made this before at home? Yes. Uh, so when did you make the biryani for the first time? The Kolkata biryani for the first time? Well, you know, the Kolkata biryani actually has its roots in the Nawabi biryani of Lucknow. So as you know, Wajid Ali Shah, when he came over to Calcutta, was actually got in his troops and he got the biryani. That's right. And his original biryani did not feature the potato. That's right. And there are many contradicting stories, but one of them that I would like to read is, you know, he found this new vegetable, which was, you know, very exotic at the time. And he also had to feed a large, you know, proud army of generals and men and so, he included the potato in the Kolkata biryani. That's right, potato and mint story also, right? You know, I started off with the original one which doesn't feature the potato, but right. there is hardly any difference except the Kolkata one can be milder. But it also depends from cook to cook. That's right. So we have, That's you know, right. so many heritage restaurants these days. And if you actually go there, you'll find that each one has its own different flavor, texture, and taste of that. Absolutely. So you know, this is just my version of the thing. Yes, let's let's quickly take a look at the ingredients. Yes, please. Uh, if you would explain these to us. Okay, so this is very basic. See, uh, the other thing is that you know, when it comes to biryani, there is uh, there are too many emotions. There is the um, there is love, there is passion, there is there are passionate discussions about its origin, which one is right. I believe all of them are right. That's right. That's um, right. But um, in, in terms of you know having spoken to chefs and from books, what I gather is there are two kind two ways to make it. You have the kachi style and the pakki style. Right. So the kachi style is where you know you marinate the meat. And you know, you have your rice, you layer them and you cook them. And that is how, as far as I know, Hyderabadi biryani is. Like. Yes. Whereas for Lucknowi biryani, and when I say Lucknowi biryani, you have to have that understanding that it has a clear connection with Calcutta. That's right. It is the Pakki method, where the meat yes. is cooked and the rice is cooked and then they are layered and then you have the dal. Right. So we are following the Lucknowi 
Avadhi style today? Yes, but you know, it has been adapted to suit the Calcutton style. Absolutely. So it's a Absolutely. little less mild, it's, it's nice, you know, you'll see. So we have... Let's take um, a look at the ingredients from up close. So you obviously have the basmati rice, which is really, really important. Because, you know, the quality of the rice plays a major role. That's so if you right. go down south, they don't use basmati rice. There is There are other variants of rice that they use. And mm -hmm. interestingly, in Dhaka, there is a biryani that I know of, mm -hmm. which uses a short grain rice. Right. So anyway, right. we this a basmati, which is used in the Calvary biryani because it's derived from the cloud. Right. And I personally love this little style. Okay. And yes. we obviously have the meat, which is right. a star. And the meat plays a very important role, not only as the meat, but uh, the cut of the meat is very, very important. So, you know, um, Calcutta, yes, if you could please explain this to us. So, in Calcutta, the Bengalis would originally want, you know, the kid goat. The kid goat, okay. Because, you know, as far as I know, that, you know, these would be, you know, offered as sacrifices. And, mind you, these would be cooked without onions and garlic. That's which right. is used by Muslims. That's right. But this biryani or any preparation which is, you know, kind of, um, I mean, which we have gotten from the Muslims of our country. Right. Mughlai preparations. Oh, Mughal preparations. Well, awadi is awadi and the right. is Mughlai is different, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Then you have to have the fat. So, in, I don't know if it's a Hindi word, but we know it in Bengal. It's called Rayaji Patha. Right. So, it will have the parda. So, right. and as you can see, it will have some amount of meat. And the cut cannot be from the hind leg. It has to be from the front leg or the neck or uh, your chops. Because, you know, in biryani, we want this to cook quickly, even if it's the pakki style. That's so, you right. know, you have to have the fat, but um, you also have to have the cut so that it cooks quickly. So, what I'm holding right. is probably a chop. It's definitely a chop, I mean. Yes. And then, you know, the spices are very few, you know. Um, so, no, uh, Manjari, going back to the uh, meat again. So, do you go to your meat seller and you request for uh, this particular well, kind of meat? I think, you know, living in Italy, I have taken a lot of things for granted. Which, when I went to other cities, I realized that I did. It was, you know, so we always, like, for generations, I think, they've bought meat right from the end of our street. He's a jolly well man who sits with his butcher's knife right. and he gives you the meat. You just have to go and tell him like you know which house you're coming from and he'll give you the oh, good meat. Oh that's lovely. So you know, I've never had to worry about meat. When I moved to Bombay, now the problem is that you know the quality of the meat is dependent on what the boat is fed. That's correct. So you know if you're going to Rajasthan mm. you have a particular taste mm. because they mm. survive on a different diet. Right. Whereas, you know, if you go to Kashmir, it's different. They usually have lamb as far as I know. Yes. So when I went to Bombay, I just could not find the right meat. And I was too young. I was 23 years old. And I thought, why am I not getting the flavor? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then I realized it's because of this. Mm -hmm. Because this has the perfect amount of meat to fat ratio. If there is too much of fat, right. that's not done. If there is right. no fat, then also it will Again, not it do doesn't work. work. Yeah. So, the first thing when I went to South Africa, what I did was I wanted to find a good butcher. That's because, right. Um, if you're living outside of India, goat is not too popular. Lamb is popular. Perfect. And while there is obviously a subtle difference, I mean, not a subtle, quite a difference in, you know, the smell, it can be substituted. So if you have lamb, there's nothing to worry about. That's right. It's almost the same with a little difference. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, Kashmiri brethren actually use lamb. Right. For their variants. Absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, Manjari, I um, remember. I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if they use it for their biryani. They use it for all their but other they, Yeah, the bosh. I can yes. see from this book. This is right. the was one book. Right. And, you know, right. it features a lot of good recipes. I, I'm not sure if it has a biryani recipe because it has so many other good recipes. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. So, you know, Manjari, going back to something that you had told me a few days before about um, the place that you buy your meat from. Right. And you said you definitely prefer local over going to chain stalls for buying oh, your meat. Well, absolutely. Uh, is, that, is that a conscious choice? Uh, 
you know, I would say mm, it's something to please yourself. Because we don't, in India, knowing the source of the meat is very difficult. I mean, you know, I know my butcher's source of meat and I know what they are fed because I can see them. Now, a lot of people would consider this to be, um, you know, unsightly to see your live goats before they are butchered. That's right. But I think it's better because you know what they are being fed. You know that there are no antibiotics. I mean, of course, you can argue that, you know, they are being, being given antibiotics at night. I right. would like to believe that it's not so. Right. Preferably, I would have uh, preferred grass fed, free range um, meat. Right. Not, I mean, because, you know, the whole problem is um, I'm also, you know, other than being passionate about cooking, I'm also passionate about the environment, which is a, I would say, the recent block. But once you come to know about things, you know, we are learning every day. I think it's very important that we take this seriously, you know, mass produced meat is not good for our planet. That's right. And Absolutely. If anyone has watched, Absolutely. you know, at least if they have watched before the floods, which we yes. last year, yes. they would know how critical it is that we take it seriously. Yes. India doesn't really have the problem of beef. Yes. We don't mass produce beef. And while you know there could be a social argument about that, I'm not going to get into that. Mm -hmm. For the environment is actually good. Right. right. Because right. they are producing methane. And you know, if you see the chart, the problem is that right after beef, you have lamb which, you know, is most dangerous for the environment. I'm not saying that you can go with the internet and you know, type your data. Right. So, right. I mean, which is why, you know, I have drastically reduced my consumption of meat. And you know, a biryani is a heavy, you know, meal. I hate substituting clarified butter for oil because I believe that, you know, this should be, this is a dish which is to be relished. You know, you, you don't uh, relish these dishes every day. That's right. I mean, yeah, it's a once in a You wouldn't month, really listen to bark every day. You wouldn't Correct. read, um, I don't know, Charles Dickens every day. Correct. You, Unless you're in this profession. Yes, of course. <laughs> you have to. Yes. Yes. But yes. if you're given a choice, you probably want to go for but other life activities with yes. our lifestyle. Yes. But, um, so biryani is a very special occasion yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you can, you can just you know, kind of throw caution to the wind and you know, just you know, cook your heart out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, let it's us hot. cook our heart out. Yeah. So, as you can see, the spices are very less. You right. have the cloves. And since you were talking about the meat, see, one of the other reasons why I prefer local meat markets is because you see these. Mm -hmm. There is no plastic involved. That's right. So you That's know, right. you firstly you can use you buy just the amount that you want, and you have your perfectly beautiful spices. That's right. Yeah. So you know, you can manjari. Smell this. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yes, Elati. Exactly. But you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this everything comes in little paper wrapping. Yes, yes. So going back to that, you know, this is also something we were talking about earlier. Right. Uh, you said you get your meat in this little silver bowl that we can see right over here, right. instead of taking the plastic bag, which some other people do, which sometimes even the seller might offer you. Mm. Um, again, is this, again, a, this conscious is a conscious choice? choice. Yeah. You know, as, yeah. Like I said, you know, I mean, there can be debates over your local meat versus the meat you get at supermarkets. Right. But what yeah. you can definitely do with your local market is if you really want, if you are conscious about the environment and so there is, if you are not, you are not. <laughs> but uh, to quote a scientist, you know, if you are that callous about, you know, your footprints in the world. That's right. Um, it's almost criminal that, you know, yes. your ways are affecting others. Right. But anyways, um, going back, so I cannot use the plastic, I can carry yeah. my own container. Right. Um, see, I mean, this is not a great example, I will carry a bigger container. You see that little container? Yes. So if it's yes. like meat for one person, I can you use could carry, carry that, that. And like, you know, take my fresh meat and that. Mm -hmm. And I think social media plays a huge role. So, you know, mm. when, you know, kind of discarding plastic, one of the things that, you know, we were talking about and, um, was, what do we do about fish 
and me because you know I mean I'm conscious about the environment but I also want you know my convenience and That's nobody right. wants to let go of needs. Um, you don't want to think about the environment every time you do something. Hmm. So then somebody suggested, you know, I mean, I, this is what I do. I never, and that is one of the reasons why supermarkets are avoided by people like me. Hmm. Because you don't have the option of carrying your steel container. That's correct. So yes, you said, yes. I, I, I stay in France. That's I, a I don't funny sight. Belgium, yeah. we have supermarkets all around. I make a conscious, conscious, you know, um, decision, decision yeah. to actually get my meat that way. And I thought, right. wow, uh, my choice is like, I don't even have to make an effort. My market is just five minutes away. Yes. Thank God we had the corporations which builds markets for each area. That's right. And everything is fresh. I can just go about with my little container. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how we see the meat here. And Manjuri, oh, as she's just... Just I did not carry this large bowl with me. Yes, you had something smaller, <laughs> more convenient, and so to speak. I mean, yes, we cannot, you know, have dirt pollution. That's and, right. You know, there's other hygiene issues. That's right. right. Even though the meat should be clean, not you obviously bring it in. Right. Right. So, um, Bajri, could you tell us how you've got everything together, got your act together here, and so, then you know, this is the star of the, you know, the Calcutta meat, yes. the potatoes. And what I've done is, you know, while you were coming in, as you can see, I have pricked the potatoes so that the flavor seeps in. Right. So You've pricked the potatoes. Yes, because you know, see, Wait, meat, a fork. meat is fibrous, so right. it will absorb the flavors. A potato is, I can hit someone with a potato and he'll be, well, you know, spot. So, <laughs> you, have, you have to make, you know, you have to find a way to make sure the flavor seeps in. That the flavors seep in, seep in. that's I mean, right. This is I just do it on my own. I don't know if it's done. Right. So, so you've made little perforations in the potatoes with your fork. Yes. That's right. This can be used as a weapon. That too could be your weapon, as you know. <laughs> okay. So do we begin the process right about now? Yes. Um, how long does the whole thing take to prepare? Um, see, I, the other thing is I don't use pressure cooker. I think, you know, there again, you know, see, you cannot, like, um, using pressure cooker on a normal day is preferable because you're using, you're consuming less, you know, fuel. But for a special day, the flavor of the meat just doesn't come out that well when you're, um, you know, using pressure cooker. You have to slow cook it and it has to be in a heavy fat. So, I'll be using a wok, which we need in the right. right. And, um, so, I'm going to cook this. Also, for me, the meat must be soft. I cannot stand tough meat in biryani. Uh, yeah, yeah none, of us, none of us can. Yeah. And, you know, see, I mean, um, you know, many experts might say, you know, maybe, I mean, they, they must have studied it and they might say, you know, this process is not really right for biryani. But then it makes the meat soft, so I would prepare it that way. Okay, let's so, see where we take it from here. So as you can see, you know, I this is you know an aluminium karhai. That's and, right. Um, it's heavy. I don't like steel because you know it burns quickly. Mm -hmm. So the meat or whatever. So um, also I prefer you know using as few utensils as I can because you know ours is an old household but we are like four members where three members are over 60 okay over 55 <laughs> so you know I'm going to just make sure that the spices are dry roasted so right we are dry roasting them it will just be for a few minutes uh, how many minutes See, that's the other thing, you know. Um, I have a blog, so you know, one of the things I realized was a lot of people uh, feel that you know, um, you must give exact, precise, you know, measurements. Why, you know, for baking, that is essential. When it comes to um, you know, cooking Indian, especially Indian meals, you don't really need that. And you know, as my grandmother would say, my maternal grandmother, that you know. How is the cook doing any work if everything is given to them? That's right. So, you know, yeah. You just yeah. This is not a prescription. Yeah. So you figure it out uh, by eyeballing it right. and by making it right. over the years. Right. You were asking me when I made my 
my first biryani. Mm -hmm. See, my, I think, you know, my story is a little different when it comes to biryani. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, we are grinding this here now. Yes. So, my father, I mean, most people would talk about Shiraj or, you know, about Armenia. But uh, Shiraz, Armenia, you mean the heritage places serving yeah. biryani here in Kolkata. But I kind of right. grew up with my father's biryani. Right, so that's where you had your first Kolkata biryani. Uh, from your father's kitchen. He would make a lot of biryanis actually. Right. And you know, so I have very fond memories of Thursdays where my father would, you know, he's a, um, I mean, you know, he's a doctor. So he had his chamber and he's also, he was also a mountaineer. So I did not really see him you know, too often. Hmm. But, hmm. you know, when we did, it was usually when he would cook hmm. and I was always given the task of, you know, making the salads. I see. So, so that's how it started, bonding in the kitchen. Exactly. So, um, I never expected that I would have to cook biryani. So one day I realized, you know what, you know, once you grow up, um, I love the emotions that are there when mm -hmm. it comes to food. I wanted to try something different. My father's method is a little different. And so I did. Mm -hmm. And this was, uh, as an adult, I had made quite a lot of other dishes by then. Um, I would say this was 2013, so I was 24. 2013 was the first time. So, um, but the first time was the first time. And right. Slowly I incorporate and potatoes. Yes. Because yes. Potatoes as well. It's just yes. not just the nawab, as you know. That's right. That's right. So we see you working yes, on your spices thing, here. Uh, the other thing with Indian food is, and with other food is also, you use your hands. Mm -hmm. So you need to constantly wash your hands in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't see the point of using plastic. As you know, I wouldn't use plastic, you know, to cover my hands. Even, mm -hmm. I mean. As long as you wash your hands with, you know, liquid soap, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll grind it really well into it because this will go with my meat. So I put in cloves, I have put in a little bit of mace and I have put in green garlic. Uh, could you repeat the ingredients for us again? There is mace, which right. is this. Right. There is green cardamom, which is this. Right. And there is the clove, which is this. Right. Right, and we are grinding this together after slow roasting them. After dry roasting. Dry roasting them. Yeah, you can call it slow roasting as well. I like it. <laughs> so now we are not going to be stingy with the clarified butter. Right. First, I'm going to. You have. You see, there's so much of clarified butter. I'm just going to put that in, and it's going to just melt away. That's interesting. Yeah, because you don't want to waste any. Yes, food. we don't want to waste this. So. It's an expensive dish, is it not, Manjiri? Oh. Uh, the biryani, making it at home. <laughs> you know, I think it's worth the expenses. It's, it's worth. Expensive. It's worth the expenses. That is, That's I mean, the best way of putting it. Bengali uh, dishes, you always add a little ghee in the end. Ghee equals clarified butter. That's right. So you know, when it comes to food, Bengalis are never stingy. I think. Half of their salary goes into in buying food, be it raw ingredients or from restaurants. That's right. It's definitely the case with me. So I think we are done with this. But just to make sure, I'm going to put this here with the rice. Because whatever clarified butter is left can be absorbed by the rice. So you've put the remaining clarified butter from that little cover of the tin can on the rice. I'm using about, roughly about 30 gram of clarified butter. And um, see in Bengal, we usually love the brown clarified butter, which is cooked a little more for that brown color, which tastes right. lovely with rice. But when you're cooking, you need the clarified butter which looks like this from pure it, this cannot be buffalo milk uh, clarified butter. it has to be from you know from cow milk but it has to also not be cooked to that brownish effect because that is already overcooked now if you're cooking with that then you'll get a burnt flavor mm -hmm. so so we go in for the white clarified butter not white clarified but it should just look like this right right it's just it's 
kind of a difference between salted butter and unsalted butter Correct. in the Indian style. Of Correct. So I'm I'm going to wash my hands. in uh, ginger paste, garlic paste, and a little salt. And the paste must be really, really smooth. Um, with ginger, you know, no matter how smooth you make it, it, there can be a few, you know, like, I call them little fibers. So I just take the juice out. And so, first on high heat, I'm going to sear the meat. So what this does is, light brownish it's like you know not really barbecued not really deep fried but you know what i mean so i'm going to put everything in and we're not going to throw this away by the way i know a lot of people think that i think the flavor is all in there so you cannot throw that away manjari i must admit the smell the smell is brilliant already. Brilliant. It's, I mean, it's not, I, I don't know if it's brilliant, sorry. And it's pure green. <laughs> That's it's right. Clarified butter. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use this and I'm going to turn it a little bit. And this is when the spice comes in and I use the spice. You're using the spices that you had been grinding so far. Yep. You're adding that to the meat. Yeah. And um, I didn't bring out two ingredients because they kind of spoil easily when kept outside. So you're going to see them as surprise, surprise when I use them. Okay, we have two surprise ingredients coming in later. Uh, which I use all over the world, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, so, um, so you can see that the meat has been stirred and now you don't really need to add a lot of water. I mean, meat itself has a lot of water, so I put the thing on thin, which is like low heat. I take, you know, my... And I use this. And now I just cover it. And this will cook for... Till the meat is soft, which is... I'm using one kilo of meat. It usually takes about one hour to one and a half hours, depending on the quality of the meat. So we're going to let this one kilo of meat cook. sear, cook. No, no, not sear, this is slow cooking. Meat. Slow cook. So that it's soft. Right. But it cannot overcook because you know when you're mm, when you're when you want slow cooking, you want the hind leg of the animal because there it's um, the fibers are not going to you know um, you know disintegrate. What happens when I'm using the front leg and you know chops is it becomes soft and then the fibers completely disintegrate and what you have is a mess so we don't want that we're going to check up on that from time to time but we're going to do it yeah but approximately an hour and a half you say um in between i have to add you will come secret ingredients okay secret ingredients come somewhere in between <laughs> secret because you know they are they have not been included by me all right Okay, we're checking on our so, meat again. And as you can see, there is a lot. I didn't add any water, but you have the water which has come out of the meat. And you can see how lovely and juicy it is from right. the fat. And now I'm going to add my little ingredient that I told you about, which is nothing but curd. So, you know, you don't really need to beat it. I use the fork, and that's fine, but you can use a whisk and. So we're adding one of your secret hidden ingredients it's not now, really a secret ingredient. which is that just yogurt. Made, right. I think it's the secret ingredient because it was in the yes. refrigerator. Yes. No, no, all over the world. Most common one. And um, this also does all, um, soften the meat. Right. And right. adds flavor to it. Right. You know, you always find if you, of course, you eat in the biryani um, in Calcutta, and it has this mildly. You know, not sweet. The, the sweetness comes from another ingredient, but the yogurt does add a lot of flavor. And then I'm going to throw this away because we are going to reuse this with water later on. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to give this a quick stir. 
that it mixes well. And I know a lot of, I mean, I know some people who actually like marinating the yogurt, uh, I mean, marinating the meat with yogurt because it softens the meat. But um, personally speaking, I just think that this is an easy process. Otherwise, you know, I mean, if you have to take too many, you know, kind of, um, if you have to do too many things before you're cooking, and you know, as you know, you know, we have very busy lifestyles. I work from home, so you know, it's not that the corporate world really understands that you're cooking. So while I prefer the old-fashioned methods for some of the things, such as slow, I like slow cooking, which I don't do too often. Um, I would never ever substitute oil for butter, but this doesn't really kind of you know take up my time. So, if possible, I would like to reduce the time without, right. unless and until it actually it's actually kind of, uh, necessary. No, you know, I would uh, only like I would I would never substitute like the time. I mean, I would try to do it quickly, but I would not follow the quick method. If I believe that you know it kind of intrudes with the flavor or the ultimate product, because you know you're not really like. I come on, all of us have put on it. <laughs> so, do we really need to cook like fancy dishes with wine or with clarified butter every day? So when we do, it can be a gaga occasion. That's and right. And usually I That's do it right. with my friends over, as you yes. know. Yes. Yes. And uh, this becomes an affair in itself. You know, cooking together and you know. Um, yes, just that bonding up. space over food. So in it, the it kitchen, doesn't matter if you take the dining table. table. Absolutely. I mean, imagine you know if you have the mommy and the daddy and the little child, you know, doing this together on a Sunday. It's a fantastic way of spending your time. It's like the family. Game. Yeah, and like there is instead yeah. of playing, you know, um, online games. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And I follow this again. So we checked at approximately 15 minutes or so, we checked on the meat, added some yogurt to it and we are covering it again, yes. letting it cook on slow heat. So I think I was too quick in closing the lid. We also have to put in our potatoes because that's how it will get its flavor. Right. Or at least so I like we're going to... back to our cauldron and adding the potatoes to the meat to which you have added the yogurt before. Yes. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the potatoes inside and I'm going to try at least to, so that you know, it gets cooked nice and well and it's soft and beautiful. contents of the bowl into well you know I'm going to meat. use it a little if I see the meat drying up while it gets cooked right so we're using a bit of it now and saving some of it for later in case we see the meat going dry later. I think we'll use most of it okay for now we use this yeah okay so now we let the meat and the potatoes cook again yep And while we have the meat cooking, we have with us in Manjari's kitchen, Manjari's father, Dr. Chaudhary, uh, from whom Manjari says she's learned the art of cooking to a great extent, of course, later um, improvising and perfecting it herself. 
Uh, hello, Dr. Chaudhary. Thank you so much for being with us today in Manjari's kitchen, which is also your own kitchen. So, as you know, we are talking about the Kolkata biryani. We are trying to map the origins um, of the Kolkata biryani. It's a heritage item um, in the Indian uh, kitchen. So, um, Dr. Chaudhary, could you tell us so about your first biryani experience? When did you have biryani for the first time? Was it at home or did you buy it from someplace? Actually. Biryani, I heard from my Muslim friends, but uh, I had it first time many years ago. Uh, when I in my medical, one of our Muslim friends he invited uh, us just round the corner one day, you know, where there is the common office. His home was there uh, on Eve Pagari. So that is the first time I took biryani, but I heard of it. After that, no, but you see, many years ago I had to cook, but well, I had to cook this meat and rice, and yeah. it smelled so nice. <laughs> I thought, why could we have it? <laughs> but I had never had it at that time. After that, mm, people were not aware of biryani so much. Tired rice was right. in the home. Right. Biryani came much later. But then slowly it picked up and suddenly um, here I had to often cook for various reasons. So I thought let's try it. So I read a book. You know, all these Bengali cookeries they have. Right. Some of them are very nice. Right. So there, they outlined so many types of beer and how to do it and all. And so I tried my luck. You know, so it started with a cookbook. Cookbook means so that I could have the their masala. Right, right, right. I have not uh, heard the name of so many things, ingredients put in the video. Yes. Yes. So I tried that because we have also used in uh, pulao. Yes, yes. And then also there is a thing, we had it in our culture, all our people. That was meat and rice put together with tea and spices. Uh, Dr. Chaudhary, could you tell us the name again? Of no, Polan. Polan no. Right. One plus or no. Paul plus Paul. Yes, that was neat and mistake. But Paul that was sketching the food. <laughs> that he was because it was a long way and they used to have the uh, calf's meat. Right. <laughs> After that, we went out of food. Okay. Now, speaking for myself, for the first time, I tried and I was uh, the method outlined was the classical one. That is, you settle everything, then layer by layer, right. you do it and you put it under pressure, some pressure. So, mm, that sort of, it's called dampa, something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that sort of pressurized cooking, I have seen my mother do it for fish. You know, uh, she used to have a container and then seal it up with this. I love flour, and it's a cook itself. And also, it never worked because after a certain, certain time, the steam was very high, pressure was high. Automatically, there were ports uh, where it used to escape, but never the place it used to cook. So I tried my pressure to Right. But uh, I followed the book very closely. Yeah. Well, like, you know, first time, when you play cards, <laughs> you are in luck. So yes. I was in luck also. <laughs> it stayed so nice. Oh. After that, often I school sometimes. That is my Yes. But uh, you can do rice like anything. Right. Uh, so, Dr. Yes. Chaudhary, have you had other kinds of biryani besides the Kolkata biryani? Other kinds of I tried very much because they were type of biryani. You know, the basic ingredients what I found in the cookbook was the uh, meat, 
rice and uh, an other small ingredients. Now, one type of biryani is there where you don't use the curd, right. you use milk. Right. And right. Uh, koa. Koa. Koa kheer. Kheer is a step And is an important part of biryani. Very, very important part. So, there is a type of biryani where he in use a copious amount mm -hmm. and that type of biryani you don't, you can't have it in amounts. Mm -hmm. In large quantities, yes. That's a North Indian type and I believe Lakhno people, some people used to have it in Lakhno. Right. And that's why this story, I don't know how to tell that story that Lakhno, uh, I mean gentries or aristocrats, right. when they used to go out for lunch or dinner in their friend's house so that they are not martyrs, I mean uh, eaters. So they used <laughs> to have some food at home. <laughs> but right. nevertheless, this kind of biryani, they can't, you can't have it. Eat too much of it anyway. Yes, yes. So this type of biryani I also tried and it's very, very rich. After that, having a little bit, it could be off for the day. <laughs> right. Right. This is my story. Yeah. And um, I don't think I have got Mumbai Bina. No. <laughs> she has just observed and got it. Yes. Uh, so, Dr. Chaudhary, what are some of your favorite biryani places in Kolkata? Do you have any favorite? Oh, yes. you want to know Calcutta biryani. Right. Calcutta biryani is a specialty for using potatoes. Right. And sometimes. Boiled eggs. Boiled eggs too, yeah. that's right. So, I had uh, two specific places. Mm -hmm. Number one was near New Market, the famous outlet. Armenia? That's that right. That was very famous. And then uh, there was another thing down in the Chandni Chopper area. The Royal? Right, Royal. not Royal. Royal ID, not this side. And you would do. Sabir. Ah, Sabir. Oh, Sabir. Sabir period yes. was not nice, like I mean. Right. Then uh, Shiraj. Yes, Park Circus. Shiraj was very popular because uh, it, uh, was, it was not very costly. Right. And it catered for the middle class people. Right. Very much. Right. So, uh, the first time I heard of Siraj was from a friend who was working in the class network, a class network. He told me about Siraj and all, very nice and all. After that, this thing came up. Arsala. Yes. yes. And what I find, uh, they are all very nice and all, but uh, some of them don't use ghee much. Right, right. So, he uh, has a special subtle taste. Mm -hmm. You can always tell. Mm -hmm. Right. Plus, more now, here, there, when I go out. Yes, yes, but we have these. I'm not satisfied. Yeah. Because <laughs> I like to smoke my own beer. You like that? <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Chaudhary, you also mentioned this very interesting point about how biryani was rather inexpensive when you had it for the first time, like it catered to the middle classes uh, in Shiraz. Uh, could you recall how much it cost back then, a plate of biryani? Yeah, less than 20 rupees. Less than 20 rupees. The prices have gone up to almost 250 these days, a plate. At that time, 5 rupees was a lot of money. That's right, that's right. See, now it's a well, very much in Calcutta, right from all the other East time. Absolutely. Yes, yes. But that, uh, what I read recently, uh, this potato business, that was done by Wally Lavi's books. That's right. Why? First of all, they used to have lavish style of biryani. Yes. When Mother Lavi came, they needed yes. to pay him anything. So he was, you know, you see, how to pay, how to feed him. Yes, yes. In your age, of not only noblemen, servants, everything. So they had a nobleman the original biryani and for the 
ફોર્ટીની ફેબ્રુઆરી સાઈડમાં હોય ઠીક વિજય પ્રતિ ઇફ દે એડેડ ફોર્ટી ટુ ધ મીટ ધ મીટ રેશિયો યસ કમ્સ ડાઉન બાય એડિંગ ધ પોટેટોસ એક વોઝ ઇક્વલ ટુ ધ ઓફ સ્કીન ધેટ્સ રાઇટ ઇટ્સ ધ કી ધીસ મીટ આઈ પ્રોડ્યુસિંગ એન્ડ ટેકિંગ ધીસ મસ્ટર્ડ ઓઇલ મસ્ટર્ડ ઓઇલ ઇન્સ્ટેડ ઓફ ધી યસ યસ ડેફિનેટલી ઓલધો ઇટ્સ ઇસ ડિફરન્ટ ઇટ કેન નોટ બી ધીસ cannot get it right yes 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 so uh, dr chaudhary also because you cook and you've cooked it yourself do you have any tips for people who want to try making the kolkata biryani at home yes uh, first is to if they can have somebody who can show them uh, in the kitchen how to do it right that's one thing right and they can read about it right also in addition to having this practical training of somebody showing, showing up, it or reading on it data because yes. otherwise you won't develop the trend of people that's right that's right it's very important to improvise no matter whose recipe you're following that's how you make it your own that's right. i once remember he cooked this biryani with pomegranates and you know i don't know how i would find it now but as a child i was pretty excited about it Uh, was that a special kind of biryani? Do you I think it has a name? It was just something that you improvised yeah, in improvised, the family kitchen. You know? And it was brilliant. I mean, at least for a shy, you know, it was red. The color was that he. I think he used it right in the end. Right. Because I felt very excited that day because you know biryani with you know pomegranate. It was very exciting. Absolutely. So you added your own touch to the Kolkata biryani. My father. Your father did it. Absolutely. I cook. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So Manjuri, would you tell us about what you've learned as a chef from your father? What you've imbibed as a cook um or also with particular reference to the biryani? Are there things you've picked up from Dr. Chaudhary? Yes, of course. Um one is of course, you know, there should be minimum wastage even if it's biryani. I mean, you cannot skimp on the ingredients, but they have to be wasted. And the second would be I think I buy my meat from the same place where he buys his meat from, so yes, it should be of good quality. Right. So as you know, I mean, he's more of an expert in the department of meat. He can actually touch the raw meat or look at it and tell me whether it's good or bad. Right. I have to depend on the butcher. Right. And other tips would be, yes, the rice. It cannot be overcooked. It cannot be undercooked. So. So these are things you picked up from Dr. Chaudhary, but also obviously you've been adding your no, own touch no, and flavors. No, but you know, when you see your father cooking, you observe that, and that probably makes a difference. Absolutely, and the kitchen, as we were discussing before, becomes that space for bonding. Yeah. Um, among members of the family, but also if you're inviting guests over, then a space for communal bonding and harmony. Uh thank you so much thank for uh, talking to us Dr. Chaudhary maybe we will take a look at the meat How are we doing for the meat manjuri Um I think the meat is almost done and uh the problem is you know this is why I mean I think I I mean it's not possible practically but if you have the same size of potatoes it helps in cooking it for you know the same time you so sure. what has happened is i checked on some of the potatoes and they still need a little bit of cooking but some of them seem you know done to me so i took out the potatoes mm -hmm. i mean i think this is you know the advantages of you know cooking at home because you're not cooking a large quantity that's so, you know, right you can check up on these things And see, I did not really add too much of water, but I told you, you know, the curd yes. went in, and you know, it, this is all the water from the, you know, the the meat, the curd and the meat. Yeah. Yes. So as you can see, I did not really add a lot of water. I sprinkled hardly about, I would say, fifteen milliliter. That's right. So this is, you know, I mean, I know the meat will be done when this will my fork 
will literally go in without but, any effort yes but here since i have to put some effort i'm going to let this cook right so we'll let it cook for a little bit more yes. i think we checked on it after about 45 minutes or so <laughs> we'll check back in an hour and a half and then, maybe no not that much because then i like i said because the meat is from the front leg the neck and the chops it's going to overcook and the fiber is going to disintegrate. Right. So what we need to do is, since it's been 45 minutes, we'll just have to hardly wait another half an hour, I would say. That's right. And That's then right. the layer will be done. Yes. Okay. Quick tip. If you want, when you're cooking it the pakki style, I don't like it because I feel that that way you lose the flavor. You can put it in a pressure cooker when you're cooking the beans that is instead of you know slow cooking it and you put it on low heat and let the kind of pressure build up and when you get the first whistle you immediately stop it so that takes a little less time but the flavor is much more intense this way right so, so the faster alternative is going to be the pressure cooker but for flavors yes. we would like to cook it and this again, way you know biryani is not an everyday meal for us yes we would like to invest some time in it so biryani will be made like once the meat is cooked i have to seal it and for that i'm going to make a dough so what I've done is whatever water and you know yogurt mixture was there, I used that so that you know that imparts flavor even from the sea. And I'm going to add a little bit of itka. Just a little. You're adding a little bit of itka, some water that was Not left. Yet from the initial yogurt and water mix. I'll also take a little cardamom. Um, adding some cardamom to prepare the dough yep. with which to seal the biryani once it's cooking, when it's cooking, the rice when it's cooking. So I'm going to layer the biryani now, which is the main part. And I have already put a layer of clarified butter and now I'm going to use the rice. See, usually, you know, um, sometimes, I mean, in Pakistan, the rice is supposed to be cooked from before, but I personally prefer it this way because that makes it easy for me to cook and I should be comfortable with the cooking. So, I'm going to take the meat. So our meat is finally cooked and yes. now we are going in for the layering. Yes. You coated the pan with a layer of clarified butter. Yes. And you put the uncooked grains of rice in. Yes. And now you're layering it with the cooked meat and potatoes. Correct. Manjari, can you tell us how much rice you've used and what quantity? I've completely eyeballed it, I'm sorry. So I'll use say one, two, two of the, you know, the um, cardamoms, a little bit of uh, mace, and you can also put it in a little uh, muslin cloth, but if you're not using too much, it's fine. I'm just going to use the minimum amount of that. You added mace, cardamom and cloves. Right. And then I'm going to add the rice again. And you're going to layer it with some more uncooked rice. Is there a particular meat to rice ratio that you followed? 
Uh, no. Yes, I have actually. So for every one kilo of meat, I would take about 600 gram of rice. For every kilo of meat, you're using about 600 grams of rice. And you've added a second layer of the meat and potatoes. And I think we are ready to cook this now. You are now I'm just making the dough. Preparing the dough. Yeah, you're rolling out the dough. That's right. So you're now covering up your pan with the dough. Can you quickly tell us again what went into that pan? Um, there is the rice, there is actually there is a layer of ghee, then there is a layer of rice and then you have a few spices, the same spices I used for the meat, which is mace, cardamom and clove and then you have kera water and you have meathi attar, attar and you have saffron soaked in water. I like using water because then you know the color comes out more intense. At least that's what my experience has been. And I, for the rice to cook, I just did not use like water. Um, there was some stock left from the meat that we cooked earlier. And I mixed that with milk and a little bit of extra water and put it all in. Okay. Um, and how long do you think this takes to cook? Uh, normally, you know, there's a very easy method of cooking basmati rice. So that uh, takes about 15-20 minutes. Okay. Um, and so that takes about 15 minutes. So this will take about 40 minutes to 45 minutes. Okay. We'll check on the rice in a bit again. No. Next time we check, it will be done. Because there's no way of opening this and checking this. So once you layer the biryani that you cannot actually check whether it's done or not. It has to be done. And we will know it's done when there is a smell. Right, so 45 minutes maybe. Yeah. So as you guys were smelling it and you know, I understood that it's done. Yeah, looks like our biryani is cooked and clearly if you and ask me how did we figure out a little bit of it was from smelling but so, Manjari? Uh, yeah and also as you can see this hardened quite a long time back the dough which is used as the you know as the purda to seal everything is completely hot but it got hot quite a long time back right so this is what the end product looks like it smells brilliant i could tell you but also this is what it looks like beautiful the kolkata biryani and so here we are with our home chef miss manjari choudhury the biryani is ready and uh, we're going to ask Ms. Chaudhary to quickly sum up for us what she's done today. Um, just a quick summary of the ingredients, preparation time, etc. So you need about 1 kilo of meat and about 500 to 600 gram of rice, basmati rice, preferably the best quality. And you need cardamom, you need uh, mace and you need cloves. And of course you need clarified butter, you need yogurt, you need milk. And um, I think the yeah, saffron, you need mithiriyatta, ittar, and you need kera water. You need to marinate the meat in ginger garlic paste with salt. Then you need to, you know, fry it. I mean, you need to sear it in clarified butter and then slow cook it till, it, till the meat is soft. And then, and what you have to do is, you have to let it like cook and and, and um, you have to also add cardamom, uh, mace and 
clove which you dry roast and put in the meat and then you layer the rice with the meat with cardamom mace and cloves and you use on top you use a bit of meaty the pure water and saffron soaked in water and finally you put it on dum for 45 to minutes to about an hour but you must make sure that the quantity of rice to meat ratio is doesn't exceed beyond 600 g of rice because if it does then you know the the balance gets disturbed and then you know um the cooking time will be difficult to understand right thanks ms choudhury uh for your time and for teaching us uh, how to recreate this royal dish in the comfort of our home space i hope our viewers have had a good time watching it and they're going to try preparing it at home as well